With asbestos, there's one thing you need to know right from the start. You need to know the rules. Asbestos is a highly regulated substance. There are strict OSHA and EPA requirements about how to quantify it, how to identify it, uh, and then how to abate it. Violations of the rules can result in big fines, so you need to know the rules and you need to abide by them. It's really a good idea for you or one of you, the people on your team to take a class on asbestos abatement and surveying. You can contact your local state EPA to find out which companies are offering training classes. Because of the regulations, if there are omissions or mistakes in your survey reports, that can result in mistakes in your abatements. And you don't want to get a notice of violation from the EPA. So having the background knowledge about your survey before you actually send it in for review is really valuable. Generally, any residential building over four units and any commercial structure needs to be surveyed before it can be demolished. In the case of the land bank, we survey all of our properties because each one of our houses is considered part of a larger project. Because of our high volume, the land bank opted to pre-qualify our survey professionals and then offered them in exchange for a volume a, a fixed cost per survey. This has worked very well for us. To conduct a survey, a survey professional will usually have a routine to follow when he or she goes through the property. I'll walk you through a typical one. We'll start outside looking for transite siding. The contractor will take samples and keeps a record of the location of each sample. Then we might go to the basement looking for pipe wrap, or duct tape, boot, boot wrap and furnace gaskets, anything that might have asbestos in it. And again, samples are taken and recorded. Upstairs, we look for plaster, ceiling tile, window glazing, wall insulation, heat register wrap, and we look for anything else that could contain asbestos fibers. The survey professional will note the condition of each material, where it is, and whether or not it is friable. And by friable, we mean that it can be crushed with your hand pressure, uh, into a powder. After the sampling, the contractor submits his samples to the lab and the lab will analyze them for the uh, percentage of asbestos within each material. When the lab results come back in, the survey professional compiles a final report and submits it to you. I'd like to show you a survey report. This is our standard covered page with a photograph of the house and our logo so that when the EPA gets our surveys, they know it's from us. That's valuable. As you go through, it, uh, it has charts showing what, what materials are in there that have asbestos and whether or not you need to remediate them. And here are the lab reports. Finally, field notes. It's really valuable to have your survey professional take lots of pictures so that when you're in the office trying to figure out what the abatement will consist of and how, and how much it might cost, you'll have pictures to go on that will help you. Another thing to have them do is count windows because if you have to take out windows, you don't want to have to go back to the, to the site and count the windows yourself. Any friable material over 1% asbestos containing is considered hot and needs to be abated. Some materials like floor tiles and asphalt roof shingles do not need to be abated even if they are hot. The rules specifically exempt these materials as long as they're in good condition. Some hot materials that are in good condition can become friable during the crushing process of the demolition and they will have to be abated as well. We take out whole windows because the glazing is hot. Almost 30% of our houses have no asbestos at all. Only 4% of our projects have hot plaster, which is great because big plaster jobs can cost upwards of $30,000. About half of our projects have only pipe or duct wrap, which is simple to remove. And the remaining one in five have one or more other issues. 
like transite, window glazing, and floor tile. To remove asbestos, you'll need to hire a professional licensed abatement contractor. We pre-qualify all of ours, and we offer them fixed prices in exchange for a volume of work. You need to submit a 10-day notification to the EPA, and they are very serious about having you work within the dates that you have picked out. You'll need to coordinate your abatement contractor's work and that of the demolition contractor. If you need to take out a window or rip off transite siding, try to have the demolition contractor ready to go right away. There's a social cost of asking a neighbor to live with a house that's half demolished over a weekend or even a week. As with all house demolition projects, you should be expecting to find some surprises. It's often that the abatement contractor or the demo contractor will open up a wall and find asbestos in pipes or in a crawl space or in a garage. It's important that they stop work and call you right away. Either a notification might need to be revised and certainly the money will need to be discussed. The waste from a demolition belongs to you, so it's critical that it be disposed of legally. Abatement contractors ship their waste to special landfills. Make sure you get copies of waste manifests so that you know the asbestos ended up in the right place.